Okay, so welcome back to this video in which we are discussing receptor desensitization, where we're specifically now going to look at the beta-2 adrenergic receptor. So we want to see how uh, it actually achieves these first two here, this uncoupling of the receptor, so the stopping of the receptor from being able to interact with the downstream pathway, and also the sequestration into uh, the early endosome. Okay, right. So, uh, let's now look at this then. So, and we'll also see down regulation to an extent. We'll see how we can actually destroy it. We'll look at the pathway to the lysosome. We won't look at how uh, you reduce the production of um, the receptor. Okay, right. So, the beta-2 adrenergic receptor then. So, let's say we have the cell membrane here. Now let's have a look at the beta-2 adrenergic receptor in a bit more detail. So the beta-2 adrenergic receptor is a G-protein coupled receptor, or a GPCR for short, G-protein coupled receptor. Now, uh, G-protein coupled receptors are also known as 7 transmembrane receptors, or 7 TMs. Okay, and that's because they have 7 membrane spanning regions, so that's put these in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and then on the end of this one, what they have is a region known as their carboxy tail, which has a sort of cytoplasmic portion, which I'll draw like this. Okay, so here is our beta-2 adrenergic receptor. So I just want to label a few little bits up because these are going to be important when we talk about uh, where um, we're going to um, modify in order to uncouple and sequester our beta-2 adrenergic receptor. Okay, right. So, um, basically, this tail here this is known as the carboxyl tail, so we'll, carboxyl terminal tail, or, yeah, carboxyl terminal, we'll call it, terminal domain. Okay, there we go, carboxyl terminal domain, we'll have it called that. And uh, this bit here, okay, uh, this is what's known as the intracellular loop, okay? So this loop between the fifth membrane-spanning domain and the sixth membrane-spanning domain, which I'll highlight in a moment, this is known as the intracellular loop. Okay, so let me highlight some of these bits up. So the intracellular loop will have in purple here. Okay, so that's the intracellular loop there. Okay, and the carboxyl terminal domain will have in blue here. So this is the carboxyl terminal domain. Right, so those are going to be important uh, players in uh, this desensitization process. Okay, so we're going to have to look at the pathway of the beta-2 adrenergic receptor because it's via interacting with the, well, it's via triggering this pathway that it's going to trigger the mechanisms which desensitize the receptor. Okay, so... Uh, the G protein coupled, well, the beta 2 adrenergic receptor is a G protein coupled receptor. So that means that it is coupled to a heterotrimeric G protein, i.e., it's going to interact with a heterotrimeric G protein. When it's activated, it interacts with a beta 2, uh, a heterotrimeric G protein. That's what it means to say that the beta 2 adrenergic receptor is coupled to the G protein. It means that it will interact with it. It doesn't mean that it is necessarily physically linked to it. Some G protein coupled receptors, when they are in their inactive state, are physically linked to the heterotrimeric G protein, but others aren't. So, I would like to draw the heterotrimeric G protein there, but I'm going to have to draw it down here instead. So, here is the heterotrimeric G protein then. So, it has these three subunits which make it up here. Okay, it's made of an alpha subunit, a beta subunit, and a gamma subunit. And this is why it's called a heterotrimeric G protein. So, let me write that down in full here. Uh, because it is a trimer 
and all three subunits are different in this trimer. So it's a heterotrimer, uh, and it's a G protein because it binds GDP and GTP. It's a guanosine um, nucleotide uh, binding protein. That's what G protein is short for. Okay, right. Uh, so, um, basically, you can make a lot of heterotrimeric G proteins because in the human genome, there are 16 different alpha subunits that you can use. There are five different beta subunits you can use. And for the gamma subunit, there are 12 different choices. Now, basically, all of these um, 16 different alpha subunits and five different beta subunits and 12 different gamma subunits, they'll have slightly different sequences of amino acids and they will have slightly different properties. Uh, but they are all similar enough to be uh, involved in forming these heterotrimeric G proteins. So this entire trimer here, this is the heterotrimeric G protein. Okay, so let me label it up. This is the heterotrimeric G protein. And basically, the name of the whole heterotrimeric G protein is named after the alpha subunit you use. So the beta-2 adrenergic receptor is coupled to a GS heterotrimeric G protein. Now, what does that mean? Well, basically, the name of the G protein tells you which alpha subunit you have used out of all 16 of them. So, if you are a GS heterotrimeric G protein, what it means is that the alpha subunit that you have used in your heterotrimeric G protein is the alpha S subunit. So, there are 16 different subunits. One of these 16 is a subunit known as the alpha S subunit. And if you are a GS heterotrimeric G protein, all it means is that the alpha subunit is the alpha S of these 16. It does not repeat, it does not tell you what the beta and the gamma subunits are. Okay, right. So, beta-2 adrenergic receptors, then, are coupled to GS heterotrimeric G proteins. So, these heterotrimeric G proteins all have an alpha S subunit. Right. Now, what is the G protein? What, what does that mean? What well, means that the alpha subunit here is bound to guanosine diphosphate, when it is in the off state. So all G proteins have two states. They have an on state and an off state. And in the off state, they have guanosine diphosphate bound to them. And in the on state, they have guanosine triphosphate, GTP, bound to them. So at the moment, this alpha subunit of the heterotrimeric G protein has guanosine diphosphate bound to it. And therefore, it's in the inactive state. It's in the off state. OK, now, as I was saying, we call this receptor a G-protein coupled receptor because it interacts with this. This is what it's coupled to. The downstream pathway that the beta-2 receptor acts on is this G-protein. It does not necessarily mean that they are physically linked. Instead, some G-protein coupled receptors are actually physically linked to their inactive heterotrimeric G-protein. Others are not, and instead, the heterotrimeric G protein is bound to the inner leaflet of the phospholipid bilayer. So it's whizzing around on the inside of the membrane, basically. And either way, the heterotrimeric G protein is close to the G protein coupled receptor. So, when adrenaline, which we'll just denote as A, comes and binds to the beta-2 adrenergic receptor, what it's going to do is it's going to change the conformation of this receptor so that it is now capable of uh, catalyzing the removal of this GDP group from the alpha subunit of the heterotrimeric G protein and adding on a GTP group, a guanosine triphosphate molecule. Okay, so that's what's going to happen when the adrenaline binds. You're going to get, okay, you're going to get an alpha subunit, which we'll denote here bound to a GTP molecule, so here's a guanosine triphosphate bound to this alpha subunit here. Okay, so I will colour in the alpha subunit the same turquoise colour as before. So here's the turquoise. Right, so you've got this alpha S GTP complex here, so that is often denoted as the alpha S GTP complex. 
okay? And you're also going to get the beta gamma subunit. And bizarrely, in this pathway, the beta gamma subunit is actually going to be important at some point. Not initially, though, because firstly we're going to talk about, um, uh, about heterologous desensitization, and that is this subunit that's going to be important. But we'll come back to the beta gamma subunit. Right, so once the alpha S subunit has GTP bound to it, it no longer wants to associate with the poor old beta gamma subunit. Uh, so the beta and the gamma subunit remain bound with each other, they've got each other, uh, but they go off and they're henceforth referred to as just the beta gamma subunit. Okay, now the alpha S GTP subunit is going to go off and activate adenylyl cyclase enzymes. And we'll continue this discussion in the next video.